Hello everybody and welcome to another Hobby Challenge video. So this is the final submissions for a recent Hobby Challenge in our PMP. That is the Painters Motivating Painters, our Google Plus community that is focused on taking your next step in your own personal hobby journey. And uh, this Hobby Challenge was all about the base. So this was a uh, ongoing multi-month Hobby Challenge to uh, do either a scenic base uh, for your model, like a scenic gaming base, a display base, or even a full-fledged diorama. So we're going to review the final submissions here, and in the description of this video, you will find a link to go vote for your favorites. Okay? Uh, one note is they are divided up into categories uh, based on the type of submission that they were. And then at the end, there's also a fan favorite category. So uh, make sure you go vote. Uh, if you're not part of the PMP and you'd like to join us on your hobby journey, you can also find a link for that down below. We'd love to have you. All right, so let's take a look at our final submissions. All in all, we had 15 final submissions, which was great, and I'm very excited to be sharing them with you. So first off, we had Anthony Krupp with his Herdstone Shaman. Um, Anthony has a nicely converted uh, proxy uh, you know, Shaman here. And he made sure to, to have the Herdstone have all this different uh, sort of scenery and mud and all these treasures that have been brought back to the Herdstone. So you can see the various relics of, you know, ogres and the treasure chests and uh, some storm cast in there, all that sort of thing, where, uh, where all of the multiple treasures that have the beast men have looted and stolen and plundered have been brought back to the Herdstone. So very cool. Uh... I, I like overall the bright colors of it as well. It really stands out with that bright green. All right, next up we had Chris Phone with the Marauder Giant, um, who has a nice little uh, goblin, little grot, little knoblar, whatever he is, sneaking away from the giant, from the big Marauder Giant. Uh, wonderful work on the Marauder Giant himself. One of my favorite classic models. Uh, great looking old school giant, and uh, he's done a nice base here for him uh you know a little bit more scenic display base so real nice i dig it i dig the heraldry and stuff on the giant as well all right next up uh we have kasimi riki i'm probably mispronouncing that i'm terrible with names i am sorry but he's got his terminator squad and he did a nice little diorama base here of uh of them the three of them holding this tower uh, and he wanted to do it in this little, like future tech pattern, which I think is real cool. And he made the bases to match it, so it's a very neat overall image of this sort of very futuristic, you know, uh, reflective, very sort of neon surface. And it looks like they belong there because he's made the basing to match that same sort of surface, as well as have some you know little communication tower or whatever in the background, which he also put together. So very cool overall. Nice little nice little diorama there. All right, next up we have David Robertson, who gives us three uh, orcs and a, on a wonderful, wonderful display base, um, fr frankly a diorama really, of these three orcs as they move their way through the wilderness. Um, he's got a wonderful nature scene, lots of different elements in there. You can see like all the different dirts and grass and moss and stuff like that. We've got the big chief up on the high rock, one of his boys, you know, marching forward to his command, and then a little shaman over on the side. Uh, kind of standing back. I like how he positioned them here. Um, I think this is a really good looking unit. I like his color choices. I think it's a really neat overall display of these guys. All right, next up we've got uh, E. Dave, who has such a big base, I couldn't even fit it all into one picture really and show you all the wonderful things going on here. So he has this fantastic waterfall base that he's done, this floating earth moat that's held up. Um, with these waterfalls, it's absolutely gorgeous. Uh, you can see the flowing water, the the sort of detail he's added into the waterfall itself uh, as this uh, hill giant or ogre or whatever he is, is uh, getting surrounded by spiders up at the top of his earth moat and trying to smash them with his club. Uh, fantastic scene with so much detail. The stone has such rich coloration to it all over the place. Look at all the browns and greens and stuff he worked into the rock, especially up under where dirt would collect. Uh, this is really just a fantastic piece overall. And uh, he, he just did a, a great, great scene, great image. Absolutely stunning. 
uh, how big and how impressive this one is. I, I really love it. All right. Aaron Roseman brings us a Lord of Change who has, uh, well, he's, he's uh, let's just say the Ultramarine that has encountered him has seen some better days. Um, as we can see, he's worked all of this grungy, uh, torn apart, mutilated, truly mutilated uh, Space Marine down in the base. He's offered us this horrific scene as the Lord of Change moves forward and uh, has cleaved apart this poor Ultramarine. Uh, wonderful blood spatter. He's got this sort of scene with all the skulls. He's got, you know, goo where the Lord of Change has sort of, you know, hit him and, and changed things into acid and, and things like that. Uh, really great overall scene. Fantastic scenic base for this, uh, for this big, impressive model. All right, next up we have Forge of Wonders, and uh, Kieran has brought us Aeonis, which uh, he's made this wonderful uh, display for. Uh, this was inspired, as he mentions in one of his own videos, by a piece that uh, was entered into Gen Con a few years back. Ionis is a Time Master, and so things around him are sort of bleeding. There's obviously a little bit of uh, uh, Dolly in here, right? And uh, I love the bending of everything, like the door being bent, the windows. I love the gears and everything worked in, the floating moats of the stairs as they twist around him. Uh, really a fantastically creative piece. I love the galaxy slowly chewing away the house. Um, so overall, this is just a super cool, uh, creation here that I think is something that is really unique and, uh, and, and really cool in the way that he sort of placed the colors all around here, but still draws your eye right to the guy in the center with his bright pale white skin. So very, very cool display. All right, Matthew Hoffman is bringing us a little bit of a duel uh, where the uh, ogres and their big old mount are staring down uh, one of the dreaded storm fiends. And, uh, of course, you know, storm fiends, they're not, uh, they're, they're a scary thing. Uh, so Matt has a wonderful scene here uh, as the two of them clash across this river of sort of warp, melted warp stone or, or this poisonous, toxic warp lake. Uh, I love all the bright greens that show and sort of surround the Storm Fiend, the very dangerous terrain. And you can see how he's actually taken some of that glow up onto, uh, onto the mount, onto the stone horn, right? So if you look at the lower part of the horn, the lower parts of his fur, look under the knee and on the hooves, you can see how that green glow is reflecting up. He's carried some of that OSL through, really placing the stone horn into the scene itself. Absolutely fantastic duel piece. Uh, duels are, you know, sort of a classic staple of, uh, of of Golden Demon, and I love this display. I think it's really wonderful. All right. Roddick brings us a massive diorama. This is so big, and I would encourage you to go and look at the actual uh, full post in the PMP because I, I couldn't capture enough pictures here to actually show you all the wonderful detail on this. But he's made this woodland scene that, you know, from a distance, if you look at the left picture, almost just looks like some pleasant woods. Like nothing much is there, except for maybe you can see the two elves in the back middle, the wild, or the, the war dancers. But when you look in closer, you see all these wanderers and all these different elements hidden in the woods. You know, the way watcher sneaking amongst these in that lower picture. You see the dryads who are coming up out of the trees. In fact, one of them is literally he pushed it into the tree. So it's emerging, which I freaking love. But he has so many little details in here. Every bit of this has this wonderful scene considered of this sort of strange, arcane, uh, wood elf wanderer occupied forest. It's absolutely fantastic. It took a ton of creativity and placement. It is something to be truly proud of, Roddick. I, I love everything you did here. It's just great work. All right. Next up, we got Steve Wallace with it, who brings us a uh, Tree Lord Ancient, uh, which is, I, I love the treatment he's done on here. He's done this dry birch bark, which uh, contrasts so well against that sort of warm, creamy underbark skin. Um, so it looks like, you know, what's at the heart of the tree is very much alive, while as his outer you know, bark shell is more, uh, more deadwood, more protective wood. And, uh, he's repositioned him up on this scenic base 
to have a you know more of an upward pose, which I think is really nice. Looks as though he's actually like pointing the staff up in this much more heroic position than just sort of holding it forward. Uh, at the same time, again, he's incorporated a ton of different elements down into his base. Uh, to make it feel alive, like there's lots of different things going on there, little speckled mushrooms and grasses and shrubs and tree, you know, little bushes and stuff. So vines, wonderful, wonderful work. Uh, very, very cool gaming piece. Love the scenic base. All right, we've got the Grand Wombat who is uh, presenting us with a little bit of a narrative, even though it's a small base, but he's given us a little bit of a story as this space marine tracks his quarry. Um, across and you can see where he's actually you know sort of worked the footprints of this creature that the space marine is hunting into the dirt where he follows the tracks across the wilderness you can see the four footfalls of the creature he's tracking down uh really minor touch but he's done a great job of making the rest of the scene feel like nature he's got again a lot of different mosses grasses rocks and stuff all worked into the built-up base um, even though there's, you know, cork under there somewhere, he's he's hidden that really, really well. Lots of grit and different elements um, and made the, the guy feel like he's going through a very, you know, green nature scene as he tracks his prey. All right. Next up, we've got the Muffin Bagger who's got uh, the Ice Scout. Uh, and the Ice Scout is uh, this wonderful scene of this, uh, you know, this person exploring this frozen wilderness uh, he's got all this detritus and such who's, that's caught down in the ice and snow. Uh, he did a wonderful job of using very cold colors on a lot of the model itself, so it feels like it's part of its environment. Uh, the icicles, the snow looks really nice. It just feels like a big frozen scene with all of the elements half buried under there, stuck in the snow, waiting to be uh, discovered. Very, very cool. Thomas Philbrick brings us a little bit of a more uh, comical, joyous scene with his Christmas surprise as we have Santa who has stumbled upon maybe some angry presents with a little little mimic present here. Uh, but he's got a snowball ready, so I think he'll be just fine. Uh, this one is a great little scene. Very funny, but w you know, very well painted at the same time with the mimic and, the, and, and Santa Claus there. Um, great colors. Uh, this is another sort of dual piece, I suppose. Uh, they, uh, he really captured, uh, a very fun, uh, unusual scene here. And I just love it at the same time. Again, the nature, it looks like he scattered the snow around. It looks very natural. Um, but he still has all this sort of ground cover and dead trees and rocks and bark and colors and stuff. So it still looks like there's real nature under that snow. Uh, so really, really nice work there. Thomas Ryan with his uh, demon prince emerging from his arcane cave. You can see all the bones and such scattered around the outside, perhaps sacrifices to summon this creature. Again, he's done a, a very big uh, display with a lot of different elements worked into the base, the different sized rocks and stone, the bones, the carvings into the sort of hillside uh, barrow where this creature has emerged from. Uh, really nice work on making him stand out from the rest of the piece. Uh, I think it's just a, a really cool scene that gives you the feeling that this guy was summoned. You know, he has, he has been brought here, called here to do some, you know, dark, nefarious purpose. Very fun. All right, and our final piece is from uh, Zab. And Zab has done a great gut rot spume, a wonderful model with a lot of conversions he's put on here. And he's got him on his boat sailing through the water here. You can see he's done, you know, created the ship. Uh, I think he might have been inspired by David Soper's piece, but he certainly gave it a wonderful, uh, wonderful sort of touch. It's, this is definitely his own creation, no doubt about it. There's a difference between, you know, this is definitely an homage at best. Uh, but he's got wonderful rust colors worked throughout the axe on the back. You can see the oxidation and things like that. Conversions on the face to make him look like a very different gut rot spume. The tentacle colors fading out into darkness at the edge of the model. Um, this wonderful wooden ship, this prowess wooden ship, but nonetheless still nurgalized and gross. Everything has this very dingy, seaweedy, mossy, you know, nurgly wet feeling. Like this guy could have come out of a, a Lost Pirates of the Caribbean sequel that, uh, that, that, I would, that it would be even more disturbing than all the rest of them, frankly. So really, really great model. Very cool conversion. Kept him on still his base, still totally usable in a game. 
Now that is something that is going to definitely stand out. So, very cool. That brings us to the end. So, as I said, the link is below for you to vote. You will have uh, one week. So, this you'll have until uh, basically midnight Eastern next Wednesday, the 17th, to vote. So, make sure to get your votes in for your favorites in all the categories and pick your fan favorite. Uh, as always, I said, as I said, if you want to join the PMP and join us on your hobby journey, you can also find the link for that down below. So thank you very much for watching. Thank you to everybody who submitted your pieces were totally awesome way to step up to the plate and make some incredible bases, scenes and dioramas. I loved every bit of this. This is absolutely wonderful. And, uh, I look forward to more hobby challenges in the future. Thank you everyone. We'll see you next time.